Good evening to all of you and welcome to the weekly market presentation of SC Securities. So we are expecting to deliver some important insights from the stock market throughout the week and some economic highlights from the local front and some important updates uh, and news from the global financial markets and commodity market front as well. So starting off with the market performance, market actually gained a negative start for a fresh month uh, started on October. They are resulting decline in uh, both the indices that was basically due to aggravated selling pressure in index heavy weights. So uh, during Monday's trading session, SPI lost around 281 points to close at 9,649.86 and S&P Cell 20 index also lost 116.46 points to close at 3,048.87. Since the S&P Cell 20 index with massive selling pressure has dropped over 5%, market seat a premature close during both of the days of Monday and Tuesday. So the that was basically due to some uh, profit taking in these counters ahead of some gloomy picture regarding the September in the quarter results. And apart from that, the consecutive decline in freight charges and the crude oil prices have impact to disaster selling pressure in the counters like Expo and LIOC. Uh, so with that, the sentiment remained negative of, uh, during the Tuesday's trading session as well. So even that day, SPI lost by 412 points to close at 9,237.05 and SNP Cell 20 index also declined by 173 uh, points to close at 2875.21. So during both of these days, uh, during Monday's trading session, turnover level was just amounted to be 2.5 billion, but with the excessive selling pressure during Tuesday's trading session, it has picked up to report a value of 4.5 billion. But on a positive note, during both of these days, foreign purchases remain to be positive that was higher than the foreign sales amount, resulting a net inflow during both of the trading days. However, during a Wednesday's trading session, market seeked a turnaround. So SPI and S&P SL20 index both gained during the trading day. So during Wednesday's trading session, SPI gained 81 points to close at 9,319.01 and S&P SL20 index also gained by 12.46 points to close at 2,887.67 and that was ahead of the monetary policy review meeting and investors were in the view that uh, the central bank will not necessarily increase the policy rates. Uh, but uh, anyhow, uh, during the day, turnover declined compared to that of previous day, just to report a value of 2.6 billion. And for the third consecutive session, foreign purchases picked up to report a value of 77 million over 65 million worth of foreign sales. But then again, during the latter part of the week, during Thursday and Friday trading session, market turned back to negativity with losing points in both the indices. Uh, and that is even despite the assurances from the president and the central bank governor regarding the economic revival. So during Thursday's trading session, SPI lost 130 six points and S&P SR20 index also declined by 67 points and the same trend continued during Friday's trading session whereas SPI lost 132 points to close at 9,049.52 uh, to report the end of the week and S&P SR20 index also declined by 48 points to close at 200 2,771.83 for the week. So during both of these trading days, uh, turnover was slightly below and uh, that is even reduced compared to that of this year's daily average turnovers, just uh, uh, ranging between 
2.8 billion to 2 billion, uh, but on a positive note, then again, foreign purchases picked up, especially during Friday's trading session on the back of Expo. Foreign purchases uh, climbed up to report a value of 186 million over just 11 million worth of foreign sales. So throughout the week, uh, if we have the summary of it, SPI declined by 8.88% and S&P cell to index declined by 12.43%. Uh, on a positive note, foreign inflow was reported and that was amounted to be 315 million, which even lower uh, compared to that of the foreign inflows that we witnessed in the previous weeks. Then let me take you through the treasury years. Treasury years actually acted on a mixed note for this week, whereas three month yield and six month yield uh, has increased by uh, 40 basis points and two basis points respectively. So now the three month yield stand at 32.34% uh, and six month yield is at 30.61%, but uh, on contrary, 12 month yield seat a decline of 10 basis points, and now it's a value of, it's in the value of 29.75%. So if we have a look at this portrait, uh, with the introduction of daily permissible band, uh, LKR in terms of USD remain to be the same with, um, uh, it was more or less the same. And uh, compared to that of GBP, LKR was slightly depreciated, but uh, we have considered it with Euro and Japanese Yen, uh, it resulted a slight appreciation. And then uh, moving forward on the economic highlights, so the Central Bank of Sri Lanka has decided to maintain its key policy rates at existing levels. So as accordingly, standing deposit rate will continue to be at 14.5% and standing deposit, uh, uh, sorry, standing lending facility rate will continue to be at 15.5% up until the next monetary policy meeting. And when arriving the decision, the central bank has concerned regarding the economic revival, <clears throat> sorry, that is uh, expected to be happening in 2023 and the contraction in private sector credit and uh, the expectations of inflation to follow this inflationary pattern in the near term and the positive developments in the external sector also was concerned. Uh, but uh, one thing we have to remind of that uh, very recently this week, New Zealand and Australia has also seen increases there policy rates. So we are literally at normal time. And then the external sector performance for the month of August was released this week. So as of that, Sri Lanka's merchandise imports have declined for the sixth consecutive session. So for the month of August, the imports of the country reported a value of 1.5 billion, whereas exports to that 1.2 billion and the export are uh, resulting in an increase of year on year uh, growth of 11.2 percent whereas imports have declined by 11.9 percent on year on year basis but uh, with having imports higher than the export amount trade deficit was reported and that was at a value of 261 million tourism income picked up to report a value of 868 billion over 30 billion uh, from the previous year and work on emittances also on a positive note uh, reported a value of 325 million and that was 279 million uh, in July. Gross official reserves continue to be at a value of 1.7 million which out of majority the reserves are on uh, conditions in terms of its utilization and exchange rate remains stable throughout the period with the introduction of daily permissible band at the mid may 2022 so at the calamity auctions uh, it saw sales average reaching an all-time high in september to report a value of uh, 1599 rupees and 40 cents per kg and that surpassed its previous best of 1508 rupees and 21 cents 
So this increase is good in terms of the turnover in plantation sector companies. But one thing we have to remember that is on reduced crops. So the availability of different teas that suits uh, that suit to different destinations of the world with the better affordability are diminishing. That is not in terms of developing Ceylon tea. So then the said crop loss was basically due to the prevailed uh, fertilizer shortage and that was further triggered by the power cuts and the energy crisis. And let me take you through uh, some highlights from the commodity markets front. So majority of the commodities, commodities ended up with gains for the week, especially oil prices jumped uh, straight to report gains uh, during the week after OPEC plus decision to uh, seek its largest supply cut since 2020, despite the recession fears and all the rising interest rates uh, concerns and gold also headed to report a weekly uh, its weekly gain the best weekly gain after march uh, with the aid from uh, us the uh, us currency and the us treasury yields and uh, aluminium prices also gained up ahead of the possibility of banning russian metal could lead to a supply shortage uh, in a global market and uh, apart from that, if we have a look at the uh, stock markets, uh, stock market also ended up with gains uh, this week that was basically aided by the revision of tax cuts by uh, United Kingdom. And that was even aided by some pale expectations regarding the Federal Reserve and other central banks to stop their aggressive rate hikes with the weak economic data from the US front. So with these positives, market actually markets actually moved up. But by the end of the week, uh, with the release of job data, which are much more solid and better than of anticipated, uh, with that the markets or the markets have seen some sort of a decline by the end of the week, yet they all uh, march toward a weekly gain. So uh, the U.S. economic data lightened some ray of hope in slowing Federal Reserve rate hike, but that was slashed by the release of job rate data, which were uh, solid in terms of investor expectations. And apart from that, the sparkling worries regarding Credit Suisse uh, to lead, the, that is the, the second largest bank in Switzerland, and that to lead another global financial crisis triggered investors. Despite the assurances from company management regarding their capital adequacy, this, uh, the second largest bank in Switzerland seems to be having issues in falling share prices, shaky financials and repeated management. So with these issues, investors are on concern whether the possible bankruptcy of the Credit Suisse uh, can lead to another global crisis. So uh, as a matter of fact, they have uh, come up with the buyback of 3 billion Swiss franc uh, to increase the investor sentiment. So uh, this is just a sparkling thing that we have to uh, keep our consideration on. So with this concluding thought, uh, I would like to hand off the presentation to Hari. Hari, over to you. Thank you, Sachini. Uh, so looking at XAU USD gold during this week, we were able to see how the price traded above the level of 1700 and uh, K and managed to close below the level of 1700. So this will initially become a daily resistance uh, for gold, mentioning that uh, uh, the NFP data was quite positive. So the dollar was quite strengthened and uh, as you can see previously, when the price was making certain lows, it was able to retrace from an uh, area of 1,614. So when the price came to a level of 1,000, uh, closer to level of 1,600, the price managed to actually make a retracement and um, uh, and above and cross above 
uh, certain daily resistance, previous daily resistance, 1,650, 1,660, and managed to close above uh and managed to trade above 1700 and now it's close below the level of 1700 so still there is bullish bearish momentum in gold uh where 50 ema is also acting as a strong support level and as you can say the 20 ema also the price is trading below the 20 ema in this case if the price manages to sustain below the level of 1700 uh if it uh, manages to sustain uh, below we might be able to expect it going towards the level of daily support 1650 1660 after uh, one after breaking below the 50 ema so there is still bearish momentum as the trend is quite down it's um and if however uh if it breaks <coughs> also breaks the first september low there's definitely a, a clear uh, indication that the price could actually come down to the level of 1650 um, and with that being said if the price comes above the level of 1700 we will be able to see testing the uh, trend line the declining trend upper trend line of the channel and then after after a breakout about the level of 4th october high which is 1729 only will be able to see it going towards the next daily resistance 1750 1760 so at the moment uh, we might have to say stay, stay some time and watch for uh, this key area as the price is uh, still uh, trading in between 1688 and 1700 so looking at uh, our all uh, the all share index <clears throat> as you all can see in the all share index it made a, a high on 15th September, which is 10,176.5. So after making that certain high, the index came below the level of uh, the psychological area 10,000. So now it is trading in between psychological area of 9,000 and the daily resistance 9,200, 9,300. The daily RSI comes to a level of 34.95. In this case, if it continues to be bearish, 17th August low, which is 8850.8, could be tested once the price comes below the level of 9000. So it managed to close at 9049.5 uh, for this week uh, and uh, seems to be quite bearish as the price is, as the index is trading below 50 and 20 EMAs. So uh, this clearly we have this strong daily resistance level of at 9200 9300 so price need the index needs to trade above the 50 ema and also the daily resistance of 1000 uh, 9200 and 9300 in order to test the 5th october high first and then only the daily resistance of 9800 9900 could be tested uh, once again so however uh, failure to uh, break about daily resistance and uh, sustain above the level of 9000 could result in uh, for the index to uh, decline to the 17th August low and further 8600 8700. The EMS actually the, uh, shows the index is quite weak at the moment as the index is trading below both the uh, 50 and 20 EMA short to medium term bearish momentum. And uh, looking at our topic of the week, which is uh, actually Haley's PLC that we have taken this week, uh, is trading in a decline momentum. We were able to see a structure high formation over here and a structure high formation over uh, here at the weekly resistance 115, 120, where price made a high of 125 and declined. Now the price is actually trading at a weekly support of 85 and 90 and also trading below the level of 50 and 20 in the weekly chart the weekly rsi comes to level of 47.66 in this case if this weekly support is acting as a strong support level again 85 90 uh, if it manages to retrace or reject from this area 
of weekly support 8590 we might be able to see it uh, again making a, a high towards the level of 100 which is also the psychological area for Haley's plc so the first uh de a decline from this area rejection from the rejection from this area of weekly support would result in price to reach to the level of 100 and further to level of weekly resistance 115 120 as of this moment we might have to see what would happen what could happen in the next week as the price is trading at a strong weekly support once the price uh breaks the weekly support of 85 90 and uh and also decline and also continues to decline below the level of 20 and 50 and 20 emas uh, we have the next key level which is 70 72.5 so that could be tested once the price is actually uh actually cross the weekly support 85 90 and declines further and uh going forward from the 70 72.5 we have the next weekly support at 50 55 so this is this is the technical outlook of Haley's plc so please uh if you'll enjoy this video do like and subscribe uh thank you see you next week have a great weekend